So when Jesus was asked how to pray, he taught his disciples the Our Father, or what we call the Our Father. And it's very interesting. I mean, you could give a whole course on the Our Father. But one of the most kind of basic realities with how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray is he taught us to talk to God. Now, what's, what's so earth-shattering about that? Well, I mean, how many of you have read a, a, a book on prayer, you know? Have you ever read a book on prayer? There's, there's tons of books of prayer. I mean, there's, you could fill a whole library just on books on how to pray, and that's great. I love reading books on how to pray. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? I have my favorite books on prayer. That's good stuff. But there's a profound simplicity to Jesus' answer about how to pray. Now, Jesus, notice what he didn't teach them. When they asked him how to pray, he didn't say, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to meditate. Imagine yourself in a beautiful green field and imagine a nice breeze. He didn't, just te he didn't teach us to kind of imagine stuff. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes I do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus didn't teach us to kind of, you know, imagine things. He also didn't teach us to do these, you know, deep intellectual mind tricks or whatever, you know, to, to kind of study lofty things and through that, you know, reach higher understanding. It's not what he taught. Is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what he taught. Nor did he teach us to kind of, you know, when Jesus was asked how to pray, he didn't, just, he didn't say, the first thing you need to do is you need to empty your mind. You need to sit in a very comfortable position, you know, and you need to, to empty your mind and pretend you're, you know, oblivious to everything. He didn't, he didn't teach that either. You know, or he didn't teach people, if you, need, if you want to pray, you need to enter into a higher level of consciousness. You know, you need to kind of use techniques to get your mind into a higher level of consciousness. No. Jesus' answer was, talk to your father. You want to know how to pray? Talk to your Father. Talk to your Abba in heaven. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to suggest that that's revolutionary because it, it, it doesn't teach us that God is something out there and it's up to us to kind of figure out, you know, how to, I don't know what, you know, get ourselves in a zone of, of you know, whatever mental higher consciousness, he's saying, if you want to pray, just talk to your father. Talk to your father like, like a child would talk, talk to their parents. Parents, that's basically what Jesus uh, is teaching us. Now, again, the words of the Our Father, the structure of the Our Father, there's a lot there. You could give, again, you could teach a whole course on that. But the most fundamental thing is that when Jesus asks how to pray, he says, say, our Father. Now again, that's, that's revolutionary. There's just the idea that you have an Abba, a Daddy, a Father in heaven, and you can approach Him and say, Our Father. I remember for me as a teenager, when I was going through my conversion, coming out of atheism and discovering God, when I would read, especially Matthew's Gospel, especially the, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, those chapters, and Jesus, he keeps talking about your Father. You know, when you give alms, do it in secret because your Father knows what you're doing. And when you pray, close, close the room and pray to your Father in secret. And, and do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your where Your Father takes care of the birds. He's also going to take care of you. And I remember for me, there was just a, a tremendous discovery this, this grace of discovery realized that, wait a minute, who's this father he keeps telling me about? He keeps saying, your father. I, and it's like, I, I never knew, I might have known in my mind, but I never knew in my heart that I have a daddy, a father who loves me, who wants to hear from me, who wants to be in a relationship uh, with me. And again, this this the simplicity of this truth is so simple that we can miss it. And I want you to know as I'm preaching here tonight, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to y'all. You like my Texan y'all? 
pretty nice, eh? <clears throat> you know, it's, there's a profound grace, there's a profound wisdom to spending a lot of time talking to God. Like, I love to talk to God. When I get up in the morning, I start talking to God. You know, you, you've heard my joke. When you get up in the morning, do you say, good morning, God, or do you say, good God, it's morning, you know? I say, good morning, God, and I just tar- I start talking to him. Good morning, Lord. You know, thank you for the good night's sleep. Even if I don't have a good night's sleep, I still thank him for the good night's sleep. You know, I figure, hey, you know, he's taking care of me. Thank you for the sleep, Lord. Thank you for this new day. And then I just start thanking him and praising him and talking to him. And I try to maintain that type of conversation all day long. You know, when I get into my car, I start talking to God again, you know, and, 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 and again, this is such a simple way to remain united with, with the Lord. I remember once um, I, was, uh, I, I was finishing a very busy time of ministry, and I think I was going on a retreat. I have a little cabin in the woods. I was going to my cabin to spend some time alone. And again, it was just, it was a very busy time and I was kind of decompressing. And I remember driving in my pickup truck to the, to the cabin and I was just talking to God. Now, I was alone in my truck, so I was able to talk out loud, you know. Now, it's great. We can do that nowadays because, you know, nowadays with these speaker phones, you see people talking all the time while they're driving. You know, blah, blah, blah. So I figure if someone looks at me, they see me talking, they just figure I'm talking on the phone. You know, and realize I'm talking to God, you know. <laughs> but I'm driving, I'm just talking, you know. I, I don't know what I was, you know, just, just you know, Lord, I, I, I'm going on retreat. I need your grace and I believe in you and I thank you for how things are going. But, you know, I'm tired. And I'm just talking and talking and talking and talking. Then I get into my cabin and I start unpacking, getting organized, and I'm still talking to God. You know, God, you gotta, you got to send angels to be here with me, and you're good to me, and I thank you that you're good to me, uh, but I'm going to need a special grace. On I'm just talking and talking. And then finally, I, th- I thought to myself, I probably said all that. I said, Lord, I'm talking my face off here. I'm probably getting a little annoying. And I felt that, you know, you know I don't, I don't, this doesn't happen too often, but just immediately it's like God's word, even though there was no words, it was just a, a grace, a communication from God, and God communicating to me, Mark, you can't annoy me. I love you too much. I love you so much. You can talk all you want. It delights me. And again, it was, the Lord didn't use those words. But it was just this, boo, that the Lord was just saying to me, it's like, I love this. Talk to me. Talk to me all you want. Talk to me day and night. It doesn't bother me. I love it, you know. I was reading the story of um, one of the young university students who was there on the Duquesne weekend when the grace of the baptism of the Holy Spirit was first given uh, to, to Catholics. And it's the beginning of the charismatic renewal. And she's just describing how she was just filled with the love of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and just filled with grace. But then one day, she was having a day where she was dry and feeling cranky and feeling down, and it was, she didn't feel God's presence. And she was like wondering, what do I do? Like, I, I, I'm dry, and, 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 you know, what do I do? And she felt the Lord saying to her, keep talking to me. Just keep talking to me. You know, keep Keep communicating with me. Even if you don't feel my presence, even if you don't feel consolation, even if you don't feel the sweetness of my presence, just keep talking to me in faith. And I've done that many times. You know, you're kind of down and whatever. Just just keep talking to God. You know, the Lord, He's our Father. We can speak to Him with the intimacy of a child. You know, it's good to, to, to have formal prayers, you know, Almighty and Eternal Father, Creator of the universe, we come before you and beseech you. That's fine, but we can talk to the Father like children, you know, to be very honest with Him, and that's, you know, that's, that's very powerful. Father Jake Randall, a great priest of the renewal, uh, did wonderful work in Rhode Island in his parish and beyond, and one of the things that the Lord taught him and his community was to always seek God's wisdom, to be constantly seeking God's wisdom. And then finally one day, they asked, well, well, what is God's wisdom? Like, what does that mean? So they asked the Lord. They said, Lord, what, what, is your, what is wisdom? And you know what the Lord's answer was that they felt that, that the Lord gave to them? The Lord said to them, ask me 
everything. That's the Lord's wisdom. Ask me everything. You know, Lord, what should I have for supper tonight? <laughs> I ask the Lord those types of questions. You know, I don't get direct revelations from heaven. But again, there's just a grace. And, and, and you know, like for example, this is going to sound weird. I don't cook very often. But when I do, I ask God to help me. You know, and I'll tell you something, you know, I'm not, not to, I'm not claiming I'm a great chef or something, but when I remember to ask God to help me, and I also ask our Blessed Mother to help me because I figured she had to cook for Jesus, so she must have special skills. <laughs> but, you know, things work out. You know, it, it, there's, it, there's, such, there's such a wisdom to, to be constantly communicating with God. One of our seminarians, um, he had a big sign in his room. He was studying away and, you know, busy. And he had a big sign in his room, and it said, Lord, help me to ask you for help. Isn't that profound? It's like, Lord, help me to remember to actually ask you to help me. Because, again, the Lord says, ask and you will receive. You know, you want the Lord's help for something, ask him. And again, it's, it's, it's amazing how much we forget to ask the Lord for help. Um, I mean, it's a basic principle in human life is that as soon as the lines of communications break in a relationship, the relationship breaks down. It deteriorates. There's confusion. There's suspicion. There's, you know, whatever else. You know, I live in community. I live with priests. I've, I've been living in community for the last 18 years. But anyways, um, in community, there's times where, you know, relationships can get a little tense and, you know, things are said or things are done. And one of the things I, I've learned is it's very helpful to go to the brother you're having an issue with and, with and saying, hey, like, are we cool? Like, I noticed you've been a little quiet, and I noticed this and that. Like, are we cool? And it's, it's amazing how a little conversation like that can just clear the air. You know, the person might say, yeah, I'm fine. Like, no, no, what you did, that didn't upset me. That's fine. Or they might say, yeah, actually, you know what, that, that was a little strange. I wasn't sure what was up. That You talk it out, and the, and the relationship is restored, and you have a nice feeling inside, you know? And how many of us, we don't talk to God, you know? Now, some people, you might be saying, well, like, you know, it's nice to say talk to God and talk and talk and talk and talk. But remember in Samuel, Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You know, isn't it wrong to have your prayer just a monologue? You're talking and talking, you're not listening. Well, yes, that's true. The thing is, is we need to, we need to desperately avoid the greater danger of breaking our relationship with God, of, of distancing ourselves from God. You know, as soon as we forget God's presence, we stop talking to God, we stop thanking Him, we, st we stop praising Him, we begin to distance ourselves from Him, and that's dangerous. You know, we lose the spirit, we lose the grace, we lose the joy, we lose the light, we lose the wisdom, we lose the power. And that's why I say it's better just to talk to him and talk to him and talk. Now, obviously, when you're talking to him, he will speak. And hopefully, we'll have the, the sensitivity to the spirit to recognize when he speaks to us. But I would say err on the side of talking more to God than talking less to God. Yes, it's good to have times of listening and being still and being silent and all that. I'm not saying that's wrong, but again, I would say err on the side of talking more to God. Now, the, 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 the flip side is, or the funny thing too, is that we can actually even distance ourselves from God in our own prayers. You know, like, like, the, like the pagans the Lord was talking about in the gospel, you know, like we can we can sometimes have a prayer routine where we just say the same prayers and we do them quickly, but we're not saying them from our heart. And the thing I like about talking to God just from your heart, you know, good morning, Lord, a new day has begun. You better protect me today, you know, because I'm going to be skateboarding. And, you know, just, you know, just talking honestly like a child to God. The good thing about that is you're talking from your heart, you know. Now, there's nothing wrong with formal prayers. I, I pray formal prayers every day as well. But again, formal prayer 
can, can easily turn into babbling words. And the nice thing about talking to God on your own is that, um, is that again, it, it, it comes from the heart. So that's my challenge for you. That's my challenge for me. You know, ask yourself, do I talk to God? Do I talk to Him honestly from my heart? Like, do I ask Him for His help? Like the, like the poster that seminarian had, Lord, help me to ask you, no, what was it? Lord, help me to ask you for help. Or something like that. Now I, now I forget what it was. Did I write it down? I don't think I even wrote it down. My gosh. Anyways, whatever it was, uh, it was help me to ask you for help. That's what it was. We have a Father in heaven. Jesus taught us when you pray, just say our Father. Talk to Him. And as you speak to Him, He will listen. He will bless us. He'll give us His light. And, and let us. I just want to end with a scripture. The Lord Jesus says in uh, uh, John 15, verse 5 and 6, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. So we need to remain in the Lord. And again, to me, one of the easiest ways to do that is just keep talking to the Lord all day long. Let me end with one joke. I'm going on here 16 minutes. Hey. Not a joke. I was talking to a lady once. She was from the Caribbean, beautiful woman. And she was complaining. She's saying, oh, at my workplace, man, you know, like people, they, they go, oh, get my, the, the fellow workers, they keep, keep getting mad at me. They, they complain because I'm praising the Lord all the time. And I'm thanking the Lord all the time. And they say, you stop praising the Lord. Stop talking to the Lord. And I said to them, you don't understand. You got to praise the Lord. You got to thank the Lord. And I'm thinking to myself, this woman has wisdom. She is united to the Lord all the time. And we need to be united to the Lord all the time as well. So talk to him.